Welcome back to this last video on the algorithms used for cutoff grade optimization. Now we've already been looking at the backwards and the forwards cutoff grade optimization algorithms. We've been looking at some sample calculations of how these optimizations are performed. And we've also looked at a graphical illustration of how these algorithms work. And then we looked at some of the speed and the number of calculations used in each of the, these algorithms and the sort of trade-offs that are, are involved in it. In this last video, we'll be looking at the derivation of the formulas used in this dynamic programming approach. Now, when I started learning about these cutoff grade principles, I started reading Ken Lane's book. And the first few chapters were actually a very good read. They're sensible, layman's English, quite straightforward. And when I got up to page 18, I noticed from talking to my colleagues that not many people actually follow the derivation that's listed on page 18. And so that's what this video is going to be focusing on, specifically page 18. Now Ken Lane actually expanded page 18. And so in the current versions, both in English and, and in Spanish of this book, there's a little bit more detail of the formula derivation. But I'm going to expand that again because a lot of people have struggled to really understand that key piece of the theory. So let's have a look at page 18. Now before we look at the algorithms, let's just confirm the variables that are being used in these formulas. All the variables are exactly the same as what's in Ken Lane's book, so there's no confusion there. So this is the formula at the top of page 18. We have the net present value of the entire resource at time big T, is equal to the sum of the cash flow from a small piece of the resource and the estimate of the remaining value at point t plus little t and r minus little r. So time has progressed down this axis here. We have little t moved down in this direction and we have removed from the resource an increment of resource which is little r. And we find ourselves from the net present value at tr to the net present value of t plus t and r minus little r. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the slope at point tr as a way of estimating what the net present value is at point v t plus t and r minus little r. So let's expand that and we estimate the value of point t plus t and r minus r is equal to the value that we started at, at tr, plus the time that we went, the time that's been elapsed, times the slope dv dt, minus the resource that we have consumed, times the slope at dv dr. Now the second thing that we want to do with this formula is take this bottom part here, which is the discounting, and just make a simpler version of that. So using the binomial theorem, we can approximate 1 over 1 plus the discount rate to the time t as being, to the first order of this approximation, would be 1 minus delta t. Then what we're going to do is substitute those two formulas back into this equation here, and we get the following formula. Now if we take that formula and then we multiply out the discounting here in brackets through to the other parts of the, the brackets, then we'll expand it like this. The next step is to take this next little bracket and expand that out as well. So this is where we can start doing some simplification. So you notice we've got a, a value at point tr on both sides, so we can actually remove that from both parts of the equation. There's also another simplification that we can do. When we have the small time or a small resource multiplied by each other, we're going to assume that's a very small number and we can discount that as well. So we've removed these two terms as well, and we end up with this equation. Now the next step that we can do is we can take this dvdr and we can bring it to the other side and we can divide by the increment of resource little r. 
and we'll end up with this equation. Now if we take this equation and look at the last two terms, we can simplify it into what's called an opportunity cost and another time factor. So if we take out the incremental time divided by the incremental resource, then we end up with the discount rate times the value at point TR plus dvdt. Now this is the formula that's at the bottom of page 18. You can simplify it further by taking that opportunity cost, calling that F, and taking this ratio of the time consumed divided by the increment of resource consumed, calling that uh, tau. And then this equation is actually the start of page 19. And this equation is used throughout the rest of Ken Lane's book. Now that you have a better insight as to how the formulas are derived, you can better understand how things change between the cut-off grade policies or the operating policies and the net present value of the project. You can have insights like if there's no time varying properties, so if your prices don't change in time, your costs don't change per time, you can see there's no DVDT term and the opportunity cost is only about the discounting and the remaining value. You can also see that optimising the net present value is no more difficult than optimising the cash flow since both of these terms can become constant. I hope that you've learned something more about the algorithms used in cut-off grade optimization. I look forward to your feedback and comments below and I'll see you in the next video.